This is the grave of William Heddle, who was a straw plat merchant in Stromness in the first part of the 19th century. And for the Orkney news, I'm going to tell you a little bit about that industry, a bit about William Heddle and the thousands of women employed plaiting straw in Orkney. For the Orkney news, and this doors open again. So my name is Fiona Graham and I've been researching this industry in Orkney. William Heddle was there at the very start of the industry, at the birth of the 19th century. And he died just as it was on a wane, just as it was starting to go into decline. Uh, he was able to buy a much larger property for himself and his family at Quilden, moving from Main Street in Stromness. Such was the success of his business. But of course, after he died, that industry declined rapidly and that source of income was gone for his family. So this is his gravestone here in the Stromness Kirkyard if you want to pay a visit. This is Church Road in Strumness and Jean Rendell lived in the street with her husband John. They had a draper shop and a lodging house. Jean was a straw bonnet maker so she took the straw flat and crafted it into a bonnet. A piece of Jean Rendell's straw flat is on display in the Strumness Museum. Um, it's a fabulous piece of workmanship and it won Jean a medal at the 1851 Great Exhibition. Basically in the 19th century, Stromness was a really thriving and busy port. It had expanded incredibly, particularly with the trade to the west, the Atlantic Sea trade. Um, so these streets, streets would have been busy, bustling and full of people going about their business and of course full of women on a day like this particularly at sitting outside plaiting straw. When the industry started in Orkney at the beginning of the 19th century, the whole process could take place here. From the harvesting of the straw plaiting it into lengths, sewing these together into a bonnet and finally shipping them south to the big ports like Liverpool and London. And over the course of its 50 plus years of manufacture, this sector employed thousands of women, some in workshops and others in their own homes. And as the century entered its second half, Orkney struggled to compete with cheaper products made nearer the mass markets. Wages were lowered and when the industry collapsed, the income which hundreds of poorer women had relied upon in Orkney went with it. And when there was no longer an income to be made from plaiting, they got by earning money from knitting, mostly stockings. After the plaiting of the straw was done, it moved on to those who made the bonnets. The bonnet makers actually tended to be younger and single, although many of them later on married. 
They often married into similar skilled trades, like shoemakers and tailors. And when the industry collapsed, many of these women became seamstresses and dressmakers. By 1841, we know from the census that 18% of all women in Stromness were engaged in that industry. But by 1851, that had declined to 6%. And what happened to these women who had, at the beginning of the industry, been earning perhaps two shillings a week, cash in their pocket often? What happened to them when that income was totally gone? There was no just transition in those days. So a lot of them basically ended up in poverty. Some of them managed to get more work doing knitting, so they would be knitting stockings. Of the poorer women, the vast majority of those women plaiting straw, very little remains. The 1841 population of Stromness was 2,784. Of that population, 1,690 were females and over 18% were employed plaiting straw. The two youngest workers were six-year-olds, Elizabeth Spence and Isabel Atid, who both lived in Queen Street which is now Back Road. Elizabeth Spence, her sister Anne, aged eight, and their mother, also Elizabeth, all plaited straw to support the family income. Elizabeth's father was a farm worker. This is an account from the website rectorylanecemetery.org about straw plaiting. Straw plaiting was also a risk to health. The process involved taking strands of specially prepared, bleached and flattened straw, then plaiting it by hand into strips. The straws could be brittle and had to be dampened to stop them splitting, usually by swiping the straw through the mouth. The straw often had traces of sulphur on it, a residue of the bleaching process. Frequently, fingers and mouths were cut. Straw platters were more likely to die of tuberculosis and cancers of the mouth and throat were more common. Remember that shipping was the way trade was conducted in the 19th century. It was massive in strongness, bigger even than it was in Kirkwall. So if you can think that not only was the straw plat exported from here south to Liverpool and to London, straw bonnets too, but it was also imported because such was the success of this industry that much more straw flat had to be brought in. The demand was huge. The skills of the women were incomparable, but this industry collapsed. And why? Well, the Industrial Revolution. A machine was invented that brought straw plaiting back into factory production instead of production on homes, in small workshops and in farms. The industry became centralised down in the Luton Dunstable area, where it still exists today, but for Orkney it was gone.